Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Again, if you guys have any questions, pop them into the Q&A portal and we'll answer them. So going now, so that was emotional. We're kind of moving to cognitive now. So that was an emotional bond between infant and caregiver. The next two we look at are very much like, like they don't care about the caregiver. Like it's just the infant um, or the individual, I should say. So we'll look at Piaget. Again, we're thinking here of the cognitive aspect. Um, so there's four stages. Again, they, it goes up to about 12. So we're thinking very much in childhood here. So you have your sensory motor, your pre-operational, concrete operational, formal operational. My advice with psych is always just break down the terminology and what they mean. Um, honestly, this might not be the best example of breaking it down, but um, you know, like pre-operational, concrete operational, formal operational, you know, pre versus formal, that idea that often in terminology, and you'll see this again in lots of the terms that you go over next year in psych like three, four, you can almost, um, guess what they mean. You know, it seems, it might seem like a complex term, but then once you sort of break it down or once you read the actual definition of it, it makes sense as to why it's called that, um, I'm trying to think of examples off the top of my head. Maybe like when you do sort of stuff with stress, like you'll see things, you know, coping, flexibility, um, emotion-based coping, things like that. Um, I'm trying to think of other terms, but yeah, you know what I mean? It can seem like you, it seems like there's a lot of words basically and a lot of terminology and you may try to kind of rote memorize it. And I really, really, really want to discourage you from doing that. And this can apply to all of your subjects as well. Um, Try your best not to wrote, learn stuff. I mean, like in saying that, I'm sure I, you know, wrote, learn a couple of things, but um, understanding and kind of deep understanding is the most helpful. And that'll help you, especially with short answer, because sometimes it's very evident in your short answer questions, whether you wrote, learned something and you're just kind of churning it out like a robot versus if you have an understanding of it, because psych is all about application all that application. Like if you look at your, you know, past VCAR exams, they're all scenarios. It's rarely, you know, like what is the pre-operational stage of cognitive development? What is the formal? It'll be, you know, so-and-so is a four-year-old who's, you know, describing blah, 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 blah. Um, describe what stage of Piaget's, you know, stages of cognitive development they're in and why. So it's this idea of all this application, reading scenarios, drawing on your knowledge and then being able to mesh them together almost. So when you have a deep understanding, um, oops, an understanding of the content that becomes so much easier rather than trying to like rote learn, you know, definitions or rote learning these stages and trying to kind of almost like fit things into boxes. Okay. I hope that makes sense. Sorry for the little tangent, but, um, hopefully you guys get what I mean. So looking at this now, so sensory motor, we've got our really tiny infants here. So in terms of our cognition, obviously thinking pretty basic, we're learning things here, such as object permanence and goal-directed behavior. So goal-directed behavior, pretty self-explanatory, behaving with an aim in mind, I don't know, rather than just like aimlessly moving about. Um, but object permanence is when um, babies or infants start to recognize that when things are not in your field of vision, they haven't actually disappeared from existence. They're still there. So often like, um, I remember my tissue stories is the example of like, you know, when you do like peekaboo with the baby and you like hide your face and they like love it. Um, so because of this idea that the baby, like very young babies, they will think that you've actually disappeared or like, you know, if you wave a little ball and then you put it behind your back and then they'll look like so lost and confused. Um, it's this idea that they haven't gotten object permanence yet. This idea that if something is not in their field of vision, if they can't directly see it, it ceases to exist. So once you're going through the sensory motor stage, you begin to achieve this idea of object permanence where you show the ball and you put the ball behind your back and the infant is aware that the ball has been moved. That just because they can't see the ball, it doesn't mean that the ball has just, you know, disappeared and it doesn't exist any longer. It's just somewhere else. Hopefully that is kind of making sense. So when you move into pre-operational, you're kind of thinking of um, toddler age, I guess you could say here. So especially we're thinking about um, 
cognition, lots of like interacting with other children, other people, especially here. Um, egocentrism is basically when they can only think about things from their point of view. So you'll often do, I remember my school did it as well. You'll do like an experiment with, um, often it'll be like maybe preps, I guess you do like preps in year twos and you can combine this with concrete operational as well. Like it's basically, you know, showing you kids who are like four or five, six ish versus kids who are like eight, nine, 10 ish, maybe their differences. So you can see that in pre-operational versus concrete operational. Um, so pre-operational kids, like the preps, they'll often, um, like you present them. I'm sure you guys may be familiar with this experiment as well. You present them with like a little setting. So there might be like a hill, um, like a teddy bear, like an animal or something, and I don't know, something else. So you, you'll, you'll be sitting like, you know, say I'm where I am, you're where you are, you're facing them. Um, and it'll be the idea that you'll say who is, or like, you know, who's the hill closer to, or who's the teddy bear closer to, or something like that. And they won't be able to actually understand that what you are seeing is different to what they're seeing. So it's sort of ego, you know, they only consider things from their point of view. They don't understand that, you know, to them, the hill is closest to them and the bear is far away. So if you ask them, what do you think I'm seeing? They're going to say that, you know, the hill will be close to you. The bear will be far away because that's what they're seeing. So only when you, um, again, you know, get a little bit older, do they realize that the hill is closest to me, the bear is further away. If you're on the other side, the bear is closest to you, the hill is furthest away. Um, so that's the idea there. Um, in terms of concrete operational, you see this idea of conservation. So lots of things to do with measurement. So again, you'll probably do this experiment with, um, you know, if you go to a secondary school that also has a primary school, you'll probably be doing this. Um, so you may get like, you know, a really long tube, like a long and a tall tube and a fat and a short tube. And you may fill them with, let's say like 50 mils of water. So 50 mils of water in a long thin tube, let's say that it looks pretty full. If you pour it into the fat and the short tube, it's not going to fill that high. It's going to look different. So kids that haven't kind of reached this concrete operational stage, this idea of the conservation of mass particularly, um, if you ask them which one has the same, oh, sorry, which one has more water and you show yourself, you know, pouring the water in, i.e. that it's the same amount, um, the younger children will say the long one because to them it looks fuller, therefore it must be fuller. So when you reach the concrete operational stage, you kind of get this idea that just because it looks different, you know, you can see that it's 50 mils and you understand, you actually understand the logic of why something in a tall and a thin tube will look different in a short and a wide tube. So that's that idea there. Um, formal operational, I kind of just think of it as like when they start to do like math, like complex math problems and stuff like that. So thinking about more abstract thinking, kind of comes from like symbolism, some more abstract symbolism as well, but also this idea of idealistic thinking, deductive reasoning. So they basically just get a little bit more mature and they're able to do some more complex abstract thinking and kind of logical thinking as well.